Templates are powerful in C++, but sometimes they run into problems that are difficult to solve. Today I show you the coercion by member template pattern. Sounds scary? Let's see which problem it actually solves. You all know this use case of inheritance. You do have a base class and you do have a derived class from the base class. And then you have a base pointer, somewhere, some interface maybe, and then you have a derived pointer. And one of the main properties of inheritance is that you can assign the derived pointer to the base pointer and then use the base pointer as a base pointer class and use all of the functions that the base provides without knowing actually that it has been a derived class in the first place. But now consider this use case. You have an additional helper template function which wraps something around your class and then you want to do that. So you have a helper base, which is basically a helper object of the type base, and you have a helper derived, which is a helper object of the type derived. And now you want to assign the helper base from the helper derived object. This is not possible in C++. In fact, if we go to the console and try to compile that one, it will say there is no viable overload for this type of conversion because it is not allowed. To understand what's happening, let's have a look at the constructors of the helper class. So usually the helper class does have one sort of default constructor, and this is what is already written here, but the compiler generates additional constructors for you. It will uh, do additionally the copy constructor, the copy assignment operator, and also the move and move assignment operators. And let's see how they look like. So they will create an helper object out of another helper object. So this, uh, the API is basically like that. And then it will just do whatever is necessary here. So usually it will uh, do basically the assignment of the members. Uh, so for instance, do something like that. Um, but this will be implicitly created for you by the compiler. So you don't need to write it, but it's always there if you don't write it. Um, if you do write it, then it will take whatever you have written here. Now, the main issue here is that this helper needs to be of template class T, which means it has to be the same T as your helper class in the first place. And here the T is different. So one uh, in the first, it's the base, and then the second, it's the derived. And the T is different, and it doesn't match, and that's why it doesn't compile. In order to do that, we need to write a copy constructor that does exactly that. So we will write a copy constructor which uses uh, the helper object, but this time we will use a different type of helper object. So we will not use a type T, but a type U of the helper object. Also call that one other. But now we need to specify the template or the type of the template which goes inside. So we use the template. And in this case, it's template of type name u. And now this function here will exist for any helper. In order for this to be useful, we need to do exactly the same thing. So we need to, as, um, we need to access the member and we need to copy the content of the member. Now, the main point here is that this template here needs to compile. And if it needs to compile, it means that this conversion here from the other dot member and to the, uh, the, the own member needs to actually work. And this is basically the same what is happening here in line 27. It's basically that the derived pointer is assigned to a base pointer because this is then the derived class and this is the base class. Um, and this is basically the, the same principle and if this would not be the case, the constructor would not compile and you would get the compiler uh, on, the, on the console. If we compile that one, we see that this time it compiles, no errors, and this conversion here is actually being done. Now in the real world, you should also add now the different constructors. So you should add the move constructor and also the move uh, assignment operator and also add the templated version of these assignment operators because uh, then you have a complete class. Otherwise, it's uh, sometimes a little bit weird if it works uh, when you move something and it doesn't work if you copy something or vice versa. So just make sure that your classes are always complete. 
If you now think like, well, oh, that's some super academic exercise and where will this get be used in the real world? Think again, because it looks very, very similar to something that is common across a lot of code bases. For instance, the standard unique pointer uses exactly that pattern. So if you have a base pointer and if you have a derived pointer, what you can do is move the derived pointer into the base pointer. And in order to be able to do that, unique pointer has to implement exactly this coercion by member template pattern. And this is actually also what is in the standard library. It's implemented and there are many places where the same pattern is actually used. Now you know how to use it and now you understand how it works. That's all that I have for you today. Thanks for watching and as always, enjoy coding.